Hello everybody. Uh, today we're going to actually build our first game. I had it scheduled to where we would discuss integers and whatnot, but to be honest with you, I think we probably covered integers enough just generically uh, that you understand what a value is and how it works. Um, so yeah, what we're going to do today instead of doing that, we're actually going to build our uh, a very basic crossword. Um, so let's go ahead and build a or start a new project. And we're going to call this YouTube crossword. And make sure you spell crossword right. Now, as soon as this loads up here, um, a crossword is actually that we're going to build is is, is actually going to be pretty simple. We're not going to build the entire thing. I'm just going to build enough to where um, it's you'll figure out the concept behind it and you can build your own a little bit more in depth. So what we're going to need, no surprise here, a label. Well, actually, why don't we go with a checkbox? Do some basic things here. Let's make our crosswords simply just basic words. So we'll go with fish. We need to try to set this to read only. If there is such a property. I'm not seeing that property, but that's all right. We can adjust that part later. That's okay. All right, and let's go ahead and set our font to Times New Roman. Let's go bold. Back color. Just basic stuff. All right, so let's call this CB Fish. And. Let's have another word. Let's go with CB net. And let's just have fishing pole. fishing pole probably yeah it's easier to read like that I should go with that you know what and because I'm second guessing myself on the spelling was just yeah there we go let's go with fishing rod That sounds a little better. Thank you, Google. All right. So now we've got our words. Now we're going to use something that we've probably never used before. Um, nevertheless, don't worry. It's going to be really easy to work with. And that will be text box. First thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and set this text box up because we're going to copy and paste this text box a lot. So we need to make sure that it's correct. Now I'm setting the max length of the characters to one, so you can only enter one letter. And then we probably need to make it squared. So we're going to go 25 by 25 on its box size. And then I want to change its border style as well 
to fix single so it's just going to be a black outline and we'll come back and we'll have to change this text box later because each text box will have to have a unique name um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a picture box and then I'm going to right click this and I'm going to send it to the back and I'm going to change that picture box color to black so now it kind of resembles the crossword that we're going to build. So we're going to copy that. We're going to paste this a few million times because we're going to reuse. We're going to reuse all these. So let's say fish is going to be right here, or whatever that word. We're going to say. We're going to call it like uh, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Let's go with uh, let's go with TV. Let's say catfish, and we're gonna count. So we're just gonna copy and paste that part. I'm gonna come over here. This is part two. Part three. So we spelled cat, of course. Now we need to spell fish. Okay, now the problem that we're running into some of these extra words is that the spacing doesn't look right. So we're going to select everything. Where it's going to look more like a crossword. In fact, let's change this background color to something else. Let's give it a more of a themed color. So let's go maybe forest green. What about something like? Eh, there we go. I'll let you figure out exactly how you want to do it exactly, but. For now, we're just going to do it generically. And I'll show you how to fix this as well, because I know these are not going to be perfectly lined up. I'll show you a neat little trick. So I'm just going to throw these over here for now. Okay. Now I'm going to highlight all these. And I'm going to come up here to my format. I'm going to say make equal. So now everything is equal right there. Okay, now net. What kind of nets are there in the world? Let's Google. Let's see what we get. See what kind of word we can use. like a pretty dependable site. Let's see what they say. Let's go with bait net then as our word. Let's use bait net. Just because it's on the Google search. So we're going to have bait net. We had catfish. So there's no word I can use over here for that. So let's go ahead and put bait net over here. Just start a whole new column. 
go into the properties now what you might also do is you might do like A for across or something like that or D for down uh, when you're labeling just so you know you can it, it can kind of help you keep track of what's going across and what's going down let's copy that B A I T N E. Okay, so I'm missing one. There we go. Okay, now let's space these out equally. Throw an error. Now another thing I'll point out while we're working on this, um, you would typically want to build an actual GUI instead of using a picture box. So just make sure that you're aware of that. Stick our label in here. You guys are familiar with, of course, labeling, and you know what I'm doing, of course. We've covered this in previous tutorials. Alright, I'm not going to go ahead, I'm not going to do the fishing rod one, but I'll go ahead and just do fish, which we said fish going to be catfish was the name that needs to go in here so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and do our submit button and what we're going to do here is we're going to use an if statement so we're going to say first we need to go ahead and comment this out by the way this is a very generic way of doing this and I'm sure you'll figure out a better way to do this uh, but for right now this is why we're going to do it because it's a basic tutorial. Say if LBL, or actually, I'm sorry, text box, fish one equals C or TV catfish. One equals C capital and let's just go ahead and 
make our lives easier real quickly ah oh, yes dot text forgot that part there we go So to see A T and you'll want to do this anytime you have something that is you know you're working with a text box and you have caps um, where there might be a possibility to where they could enter upper or lower you want to do a check to make sure it hits both now what I'm going to do here as well is uh, just strictly a syntax type thing uh, so this is easy for you and I to read when you put an underscore down there it automatically will go to the next line but if I was to press enter it would error out so that's what it's there for as you can see my error went away uh, let's see, T, so now we're on F. And we're doing I. Now, again, this is kind of tedious, but again, this is just a basic. Uh, explanation or a basic way to do this you will find a better way or at least I hope you do now if this is the case what we want to do is we want to have CB fish dot checked it's either checked or check state let's double check here checked equal true okay so it's not going to be that way so cb fish there we go Okay. And it would say else unchecked. Okay. Let's go ahead and save this. Now technically we don't have this finished, but we see we have fish. So let's go ahead and type in just cat. Whoops. What's submit? Nothing happened. So let's type in whoops. Cat 
catfish. So now we know that that's right. As you can see, it's already checked. Let's see if we uncheck it. And we go ahead and click Submit. And now it's going to check it off for us. All right, so that is pretty much what we've done here. Is we've checked this off. Now we could do the same for the next one or any other words that we would like to add. Now here's something else that you might consider doing as well. Is you might consider having a counter in here or a ticker. Uh, and you might actually set this to force this to where it's locked. To where they can't um, modify it. Like say locked. Usually what you can do is you can set something to read only. Which I don't see that option on here. Um, and the user can't interact with it at all. It's, it can only be interacted through via code. So let's see actually if we can do that. No, we can still mess with it. All right. So what you might want to do then, um, instead of using a checkbox, if you're making a more elaborate version, use um, a graphic, like the checkmark graphic. And that way uh, the user can't come up here. and uncheck it. What you could also do is you could come over here and you could force it to do this check to see if it's already been um, if that word's already been solved or not to force it to stay checked if the user tries to change the check state like it is right here on this event. But the easiest way to do it would probably be using a graphic. That would be what I would recommend. Um, another thing that you can do here just as a tip, even though we haven't talked about this, is you might try changing this over, this giant if statement over to um, an array. Now, we haven't covered arrays, but that's something for you to look into. And freedom, you know, basically food for thought. But otherwise, this will work just fine. Even though it is a little lengthy, definitely a little overly wordy, um, it will work just fine for this purpose. I mean, this is just a very basic game. Um, it's, you know, not going to solve world hunger or anything. So, you know, don't try to overcomplicate things when you're building your software. That's another problem I f commonly run into with developers. They try to overly complicate their games uh, because they try to make it, quote unquote, more efficiently built. And, you know, honestly, at the end of the day, as long as it works, it's all that really matters. I mean, efficiency is good. You want to learn how to become a more efficient developer. But at the same time, when you're building something basic like this, efficiency really is not going to matter. Um, you're not going to need to optimize this game in any way, shape, or form. So it doesn't need to be overly complex. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, and as you learn you know learn how to develop software more and more as a developer you'll not only get faster but you'll also be able to determine you know better you know is this a point where I need to optimize or can I just kind of slack off and do something you know a little bit wordy but it'll get the job done it doesn't matter um, and that just comes with experience essentially if you you know figuring out if you can do that or not in your software alright so Post any questions that you may have about this crossword. Um, I'm going to go ahead and finish making this crossword myself. And I will probably share or post the finished project when I get it done. Um, but for this tutorial, you guys have more than enough knowledge here to figure out how, how to build your own. Uh, but anyway, like I said, post your comments or questions that you may have about this project. Let me know if you like this project, if you didn't like this project. If it was too hard, if it was too simple, uh, you know, let me know what's going on. Uh, also, please subscribe and post any other questions or any other feedback that you may have. All right, thank you.